They are 15 was the most used gun and five out of six of the most deadly school shootings. With this semi-automatic rifle, someone can shoot up to 40 rounds per minute, which is about one bullet every one and a half seconds. School massacres can be dated back as far as 1927, and is sadly becoming more and more prevalent. Events such as Columbine, Sandy Hook, and Parkland shootings have torn numerous of families and communities, sparking numerous debates about gun control, questioning the sanity of the perpetrator, and wondering what actions and guidelines school students and parents should take to prevent horrendous acts like these in the future. <laughs> the unfortunate thing about this issue is that people propagate for change for a moment, but the conversation fades until the next reoccurrence of a school massacre transpires. School shootings have unfortunately been a recurring issue in America's history. The first school shooting dates back to November 2nd, 1853, Louisville, when Kentucky student Matthew Ward bought a cell clock and pistol in the morning, went to school, and killed his schoolmaster, Mr. Butler, for excessively punishing his brother the day before. Since then, there have been multiple school shootings in the U.S., including April 20th, 1999, students Eric Harris, 18, and Dylan Claybolt, 17, opened fire at Columbine High School in Littleton, Colorado, killing 12 classmates and a teacher and wounding 26 others before killing themselves in the school's library. April 16, 2007, 23-year-old Sing Hu Cho fatally shot 32 people in a dorm and a classroom at Virginia Tech in Blacksburg and then killed himself. December 14, 2012, a 20-year-old gunman killed 20 first-grade children and six educators inside Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut, and then killed himself. He also fatally shot his mother before entering the school. December 7, 2017, two students at Aztec High School in New Mexico were killed by a gunman disguised as a student. Police said the shooter later killed himself. February 14, 2018, a former student is accused of killing 17 people at Majory Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. This is a map of school shootings from 2000 to 2017. As you can see, a total of 194 school shootings have happened over the years. This chart shows how the amount of school shootings have increased dramatically from the 1760s to present day. It is very common after a school shooting for there to be copycat threats. For the most recent school shooting, there have been over a dozen arrests for copycat threats. Overall, though it is unfortunate, school shootings have been on the rise. Hopefully, it will soon begin to decline. After the heartbreaking events of a school shooting, many people wonder why. What reason did they have to do this? What was their motive? Statistics show that the most common reasons for school shootings are that they want to get back at those who hurt them, they have been victims of physical abuse at home, they have mental problems, other kids encourage them to do it, they are afraid of their own safety. While individuals with mental illness are more likely to be victims than perpetrators of violence, Certain symptoms, especially when severe and occurring in combination with antisocial, paranoid, narcissistic, or borderline personality disorders, can predispose of to violent behavior, especially when the individual is experiencing or has experienced severe trauma or stress. So it is, of course, important to attempt to identify and assess those who have characteristics that make them vulnerable to committing an act of violence and to provide whatever degree of support or restraint they may need in order to prevent them from doing so whether or not they may meet the diagnostic criteria for any given mental illness many people have noticed that the young man who committed the recent mass murder sent out multiple red flags warning of how dangerous he was it is important to recognize these signs in an individual inter intervene where appropriate 
but far more effective is to take action before any of those signs appear, and the best way to do that is through public health approaches, primary prevention through policies that improve social, cultural, and economic conditions, not to mention reducing accesses to guns, is far more effective than all the police, doctors, and hospitals combined, and intervening only after the tragedies have struck. Here is a group of students. Which ones, or one, do you think will become a school shooter? Can't find one? That's what I thought. Any regular person can be a school shooter, but if you see these warning signs, please report it to an administrator. Not everyone who has or had these characteristics may not even be thinking about shooting a school, let alone anyone. But if you feel uncomfortable, then it is best to tell someone about it. Some warning signs can be selling knives, killing animals, bullying, infatuation with weapons, they have no friends, or are always being singled out. They have very dark humor fascination with other past shootings. They don't care about their grades or schoolwork. They have some unexplainable injuries or change in their personality. They could be a change in their eating habits. They could have anger problems. They can also show the lack of remorse and it is probably one of the most striking signs of a shooter. They do unspeakable acts and display no regret. They could be the use of alcohol or drugs and they can have a history of contact with the police for behavior problems, anger, etc. Where are school shooters getting their guns? What guns do school shooters choose and why? But most importantly, what can be done about it and what changes can be made to make these tragedies less common and save lives needlessly lost? Since the Sandy Hook shooting, over 400 people have been shot in more than 200 school shootings. This doesn't even include statistics for mass shootings in general. America is the only country with this issue. There is a solution that is clearly being ignored in America, and this is largely due to the relaxed laws and attitudes about gun safety. It is far too easy for potential school shooters to get guns and become serious threats. The guns available to them are needlessly powerful weapons of killing. The most obvious way to stop school shooters is to restrict their access to guns. A majority of guns used in 18 recent mass shootings were bought legally and with federal background checks. Many school shooters also get guns as gifts or steal them from their parents who poorly secure their guns. In America, many of our background checks are flimsy and only mouth service is safety. The school shooter Nicholas Cruz, who was responsible for the Parkland shooting, was looked into by the FBI when he threatened to shoot a school. They found no issue with him. His access to guns wasn't restricted, and blood was spilt because of this fatal error. Gun owners should also be required to keep their guns locked up well. The irresponsibility of some gun owners has been exploited and lives have been lost. The most commonly used weapon for mass shootings is the AR-15. The AR-15 is one of the most dangerous guns a civilian can own. It is often referred to as the civilian version of the military's M16. With completely legal aftermarket modifications, these modifications are readily available and inexpensive. One of these modifications is the bump stock. This transforms the gun into a fully automatic weapon with greatly increased killing potential. These modifications undermine our laws about gun safety. The bump stock makes our laws against automatic weapons useless. As a parent, what concerns do you have about school safety? Okay. Well, as a parent, um, I want to make sure that when I uh, send my kids to school every day that they're safe. Uh, you know, I want to know that there's a plan in place for just about any type of an emergency that could happen. Uh, that's important to me, just like it would be important to all of the parents of the students of Northeast Magnet. And I'm also, you know, a Northeast Magnet parent. What do you try to do to prevent a tragedy from happening? Well, we have a lot of different things in place um, that I think students are aware of a lot of what we do. Uh, they know that we have a crisis plan in place. They know that we practice lockdown drills. Um, they know that teachers get feedback from those lockdown drills, and they kind of know what they're supposed to do. So that's a big part of what we do, but there's a bunch of other stuff that we do that I think students don't know about. 
Um, we encourage students to report. They do know that we encourage them to report anything that might be dangerous, and our students are very good at Northeast Magnet about doing that. In fact, in a recent uh, issue that we had with a, a threat that turned out to not be a threat for Northeast Magnet but was a threat for another school in Oklahoma City, um, but because of confusion, we thought that might be for us. It's really important, though, that students help us with this, too. One thing that we'd ask students to do is, uh, I know people often are trying to be nice, but our doors are locked during the school day for a reason. The only doors that are open are the doors right in front of the uh, main office, and students can come in or parents can come in, guests can come in and check in in the main office. What we can't have happen is we can't have students opening the main hallway doors for other people, even if you know who that person is. So we need to make sure that we're not opening those doors for people, even our friends. We need to send them to the front of the building and have them check in the, the proper way. Here is what you should do as a student in the case of a school shooting. The important thing to keep in mind is run, hide, fight. The method was made to train students in the case of a school shooting. Here are the most important points of it. Run, use escape routes, follow staff's instructions, and help others escape. Hide. Hide until help arrives. Lock and or barricade your door. Remain calm and quiet. Fight. Fight is a last resort. Improvise weapons. Use any means. Commit to your actions. For more information on this, go check out the original video. Okay, what, so when you think about the things that you want to report, I mean anything that you would see as a threat, and that threat could be things that you hear, it could be things that you see on social media, it could be graffiti that you see written on a, you know, a desk, a, um, a bathroom, anything that looked like it, it was a threat. Those are the things that you'd want to report. If it happens during the school day, your best bet is to report that to your administration or any security in your school. Uh, you could also report that to a teacher and teachers will notify us, but probably the easiest way to get it going quickly is to notify an administrator and you'd want to do that during the school day. If you see this threat somewhere outside of school, so like something on social media, um, or you hear about something that happened maybe at school and it's after school hours, your best bet is to call your school uh, district security line and then they will get in touch with the administrator. Uh, sending emails, that's kind of nice because it's good to know those things, but if those emails are not seen in a timely fashion, uh, things don't get rolling like they need to, so your best bet is to call your district security number. Well, let's start off by what schools are doing now. Right now, schools are practicing the run high fight method to help eliminate the number of possible victims during a shooting. Do you think that we as a school should change, alter, or add any more steps to ensure safety of the students? Well, I think as a school we always need to be thinking about things that we can do to make us uh, as safe as possible. So one of the things that I'm encouraging people to do and been getting great feedback from people, I've got some good feedback from students, got some good feedback from um, staff and from parents, is take a look around. What are some things that you think we need to do? Obviously there are going to be some financial constraints that will keep us from doing some of the things that we really want to do, but there are a lot of really good ideas that we've had that are things that we can implement right now. And uh, we direct people in through the main office, so that's one thing that we're doing to try to make sure that people are safer. Another thing that we're doing is just thinking about lockdown um, pr procedures. Uh, how do we make sure that we have our doors locked and how do we communicate with substitutes because that's a big thing that we need to make sure that we're doing a good job with. Uh, our teachers understand what they're supposed to do and they do a great job with it, but how do we make sure our substitutes understand? There are many factors that contribute to the frequency of school shootings. The top two issues most blamed for this problem are lack of gun control and mental illness. There are signs peers and parents can look for in students and classmates, like anger, unusual interest in guns, and or harming animals. Pay attention to those warning signs if you see them, and if you hear or see something that is alarming, speak up. These people could end up in mental institutions or jail. There isn't just one thing that can fix a problem with this many contributors. In order to no longer see footage of kids hiding from bullets behind their backpacks, we all have to take action. We do not have to let our safety rest in the hands of those who feel our lives are not important enough to be addressed. Even if laws were passed, there is no guarantee they'll work if people won't act accordingly to help laws succeed. We have the ability to change without having to be told we are allowed to change. Next week it could be us or someone we know who doesn't come home from school. 
Although it may seem to be an impossible task to complete, there are things we as individuals can do to put an end to children being shot in a place where their only worry should be the math test they have next hour. We all have something we could do. There are stores that are adding more regulations to their gun sale policies. There are schools with speak up hotlines. There are children and adults marching. There is something for everyone. Children don't ask for things like easy access to firearms. We ask for things like scholarship money and financial aid. We never ask for it to be this easy, so why are we the ones paying the price? Why are we the ones that don't get any say when we are the ones being affected? We value our lives. Do you value them too?